Hi everybody, Stampin' Sue Creates here, here to do another fun video. <clears throat> this was another request by a viewer, and she had asked me about doing a design from uh, Sweet Pea Embroidery. It's a bunny round uh, centerpiece <coughs> project. So this is done in um, multiple hoopings. So I started working on it this afternoon. Today is Sunday... Oh, it's in the calendar. Sunday, Sunday, March 21st, 2021. So 321, 21. Imagine that. So I am making this for my daughter. So I hope she's not watching. Um, and I took a little nap. I'm not showing myself. I took a little nap. And my hair is like disaster zone. I mean, how do you fall asleep on the couch taking a nap? And your hair ends up looking like that. But anyhow, um, here's the design on my screen. Let me see if you could see that. So it looks like a piece of pie. So it's done in six separate hoopings. And I am doing the six by six size. It comes in various sizes. So I have to use a large hoop. So I have my hoop all set up with a stabilizer. So let me show you. Let me turn you over this way so I can kind of see what I'm showing you. Let me try to hold it up. So let me put another piece behind it because they're kind of getting the light shining through. So I have three of the three of them done already. So there it is. Now you may be wondering, why are you doing it on black? <laughs> well, uh, my daughter's kitchen is all um, the checkered uh, buffalo check. So let me hold it up with the other ones. So I'm doing um, the buffalo check fabric and then in between. So every other one is going to be the black. So when you are all done, here's the seam. So the seam will be like that. And then the next one goes like that. Because when I first started making it, I thought there's no way I'm ever going to be able to align up the buffalo checks. I mean, you can if you have a lot of time to play around. I don't. I want to get the project done and over and done. But you say that more than once. So let me get my pins so you can have a little visual. Um, now, when you purchase the designs from Sweet Pea, they have really great instructions. And... Um, I'm not going to show you exactly how it all is going to be together, but if you go on over to my Facebook page at Sweet Bee Embroidery, you will be able to see um, the finished project. I will take a photo of it. I'm just aligning up how this will look, kind of, sort of, so you can get an idea of what it's going to be like. But the directions are all included, even with how to stitch. So here's two of them. So this is how you would stitch them together. Now you would trim all this excess. You would leave yourself about, um, I don't know, about a half an inch going around or so. And um, let me put the other one so you can kind of get a visual. So it's about halfway done. So I wanted to come on and... Um, Actually, I'm anxious to get it finished. So now that I took my little nap, <laughs> and it's a beautiful day here, you would think I'd be outside, right? Well, I did go outside for a little bit with the dog and took her for a little walk. But um, I'm back in my craft room working on this. Because Easter's coming up. My goodness, I couldn't believe how quick Easter's coming up. Okay, so here's a visual on how it's going to look. So, Michelle, I hope you're not watching, but I'm making this for you, for your kitchen. And even though it's black, I think it's rather cute. So, um, I'm going to do, the next one I'm going to do is the one on the buffalo check for you. And, well, I guess I need another buffalo check, two more buffalo checks, and one more black one. And then we'll be done. So depending on what size your table is, you may want to determine as to um, what size block you want to do. So isn't that cute? I think it's going to be cute. Even though it's black, I think it's going to be cute. She's going to love it. She's going to love it. Okay. 
So um, I have the design pulled up. Here we are. And again, this is from Sweet Pea. Um, I think it was $10. And they're by no way sponsoring this. I am just doing this from a customer request. So I did purchase the design this morning. So let me get you situated so you can watch the stitching. So I'm gonna hit embroider. And um, here's the design here. It says 28 minutes, um, 12 different changes of colors, but the colors are basically, you know, the same. I have them all lined up here. I'm using Thread Nanny, and I have the black loaded up on um, the embroidery machine. I have a white bobbin, just put a brand new bobbin, and um, let's go ahead and get this going. Okay, so first thing, what I like to do is to do a stitch out to show me where to put my, um, my batting. So I do the first stitch out, and then I go and, and I'll show you in a second. I go back in and uh, go back to the beginning with the batting on it, and then it basically does the same thing. So it looks like a piece of pie. I'm just using my scraps of warm and natural batting. Um, you use what batting you like to use. And, um, and I believe the fabric, it tells you for this size to cut your fabric eight by eight. I think we'll be good with this. Okay, so let's go back to the design. I think you could see that. All right, so down here with the plus or minus, I'm going to hit that. And over here you see the two spools of thread. One has a minus and one has a plus. And then it has all these others. You can go back in so many stitches you want to go back. But I'm going to minus back and go back to the beginning. Because I want to restitch that out again. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Okay. And I have my phone charging. Because I noticed. And I'm going to keep an eye on this. In case it comes a little too close to the batting, I'm going to stop it. And um, <coughs> we'll see how that goes. So um, I have my phone charging. It's plugged in um, because the battery is getting low. I did a video earlier. Oh, we're living on the edge there. Okay, we're still good. I did a video earlier and I've been using my phone. So the battery life has... Now what they just, they suggest you do is to trim around the batting. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Hopefully not hitting you guys. Yeah, well, I'm gonna hit you guys. All right, I'm just gonna take it off to the side and trim around the batting. You don't wanna cut your stabilizer, FYI. And I'll come back and show you. What that looks like. So I like to lift it up and gently pull it up as I'm cutting. I mean, you don't have to be too precise on this, but this just removes all the excess batting. So later when you go to stitch it together, you won't have all that in the way. Okay, so let me put this back on the machine. All right, so here you can see um, I cut out all around the batting. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to place my piece of fabric. Now I'm going to sort of put it on the diagonal. Let me check my other piece. Let me see. I think that's what I did with that. Um, yeah. Put that, I'm going to put that up there so I can look at it. Um, it's, although it doesn't really matter. But, because um, it's all going to go together, and by using those black pieces in between, um, it'll be okay that I don't have to line up the buffalo checks. All right, so we're going to put the foot down, and um, I think y'all can see. Sorry, just want to make sure you can see. I'm gonna, whoop, put the foot down. Oh, I have to slide it all the way in and push that lever down. Then we're good to go. All right, so now it's going to stitch out all around 
again, doing another piece of pie, so to speak. So I have all of my colors laid out I'm using um, Fred Danny thread that they were so gracious to send me. And I will uh, put a link below a little hashtag along with sweet pea hashtag. And who knows, maybe they'll, they'll watch my video <laughs> and they'll see how, how well their thread works with my brother machine. Okay, so we did that. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to stitch out the bunny design where the um, fleece is gonna go for the bunny. So I'm just gonna leave the black thread in because I outlined the bunnies in black thread. So I'm just gonna leave that in there. And it's gonna show you where you, it's gonna be a placement stitch for the um, fabric for where you're going to put your bunny. And I got to say it, this is a 28 minute stitch. You know, there's placement of materials and you know, yada 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 stuff. All right, so did I have a piece? No, I have a piece over here. Okay, so let's see. So I have a piece of white fleece, and um, there is a right and a wrong side to the fleece, you know, it's however you want it to be, but this is going to get placed. Over here, I want to make sure I have enough room. Okay, this will get placed over the top, and then what it's going to do is it's going to stitch the bunny, and then we're going to cut that out like we cut out the fleece. And I'm halfway through this project, so you know it's just a quick project, you know, but you have to do six of them. take the hoop back out and um, maybe I can show you a little bit here how I do this. So I usually like to remove the hoop from the machine but I'm going to gently use, I like to use these scissors and let me show you, they kind of have a little, um, you know, the, the whatever part of that you call it goes down and then this part kind of curls up. So they're really good for applique. You can use duckbill scissors as well. I'm gonna take this out of the hoop so I can turn it. I like to turn it as I'm cutting. And I'm just going to carefully snip around to trim out all the excess fleece because the next part of it is going to be the satin stitches going around the bunny. So you want to get rid of all this fleece. Now it's it's a little difficult to get in between the ears, but just take your time, you can do it. And by rotating, rotating your hoop as you're cutting, it will help you immensely. Okay. So I know this might not be the best angle to show you how to cut, but I'm sure you've seen my other videos where I show it's just trimming around getting as close to the stitching as you can of course without cutting the stitching now being I am um, using white fleece and I'm going to be using um, black thread you will notice as it's stitching around the white fleece may poke through the black thread. So simple solution to that is to use a black Sharpie marker when you're done and to go over the stitching with the permanent marker. And that will cover up any of the white that may be poking through the, um, through the thread. Another thing I like to keep on hand is one of these lint rollers. And I like to go over, especially when you're working, 
you know, with cutting little pieces in that. I like to go over my project with that, and it will pick up any of those little fine lint hairs and whatnot. So there's our bunny. All right, I'm going to slip this back into machine, and I'm keeping the black thread because right now it's going to do the stitch out for the bunny. Do all the satin stitches going all around the bunny. And then the rest of it is just basic embroidery. We have those little crosses, little X's. I use pink thread for that. And of course I use yellow for the flowers, green for the leaves. Um, the little tail, oh, the next thing will be the little tail. And I did a little pink tail because I just wanted a pop of pink on this. And, um, and then, you know, then you're done. So this takes seven minutes. I believe this is the longest stitch for all of them. So it leaves your edges unfinished because you're going to, um, when you put your pieces together, you do two at a time and you build the base of the top of your table runner. Then for the back, there's, like I said, there are full instructions that will tell you how to do it. So for the back, you take two pieces larger you know once you sew all this together your two pieces that kind of envelope together so you will have one piece one piece with a folded edge and you butt them up against each other and um, use your sewing machine so you have to use your sewing machine to stitch these together and then um, stitch all around and when it, when you stitch you leave a little space in between and that will be your space for turning it so your seam when you turn it to the right side will be in the center of the back. So then you just can use a glue or just hand stitch the seam together. And, um, and that's it. So like I said, I have a Facebook page for my embroidery and it's Sweet Bee Embroidery. So it's in capital letters S-U-E and then W-E-E-T and then a space and capital B-E-E -E -E space, capital E for embroidery, and um, yeah, that is my Facebook page. So you can see on there different projects that I do. I like to post everything on there so friends and family can, can see what I do. I also post on my personal page because I used to sell a lot, um, and now I'm, I kind of got away from doing craft shows and um, because I just couldn't do it all, you know. Sometimes you really want to do... But I just want to do this for fun. Sometimes I'll have people contact me and say, oh, that's so cute. Can you make me one? And, I, and I'll make it for them. But I um, just like to do, some, do this for fun. So I see this is coming out really nice. Um, if you want to, in your bobbin thread, if you're using a lot of black, you can go ahead and put black thread in the bobbin if you'd like. I just have white, so you're not really going to see it. So if it's something that you're going to see, you want to match up your bobbin thread to whatever your fabric is. If it's a backing, you will see. So I have these bunnies that my daughter had picked up last year at Walmart. And um, another project I want to do is I want to um, embroider on the ears. I'm seeing people doing that. And I thought that would be something fun to do. So just so many projects in so little time. Who can relate to that, right? But these are just so cute, so fun. And um, although it's black, I really think it's gonna look cute in her kitchen. So I hope when um, I give it to her, she takes a picture of it on her table and she enjoys it every year. I think the backing what I'm gonna use is maybe the buffalo check for the back. I have to look and see what I have, if I'm gonna have enough of it or not. Otherwise, I have some other fabrics I can use for the back. So you do need a sewing machine in order to complete this project. Once you do all of your little pizza shapes, you have to sew them together and sew on your backing. But there's no extra, you know, binding or anything like that to do. I think the hardest part will be putting it all together. But you just take your time and hopefully you have a little bit of sewing skills 
to put it together and you should be fine. And heck, it is handmade. I tell people all the time, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's handmade, right? So this is so fun. I also purchased, purchased um, some other applique and project designs. One is a little pencil case with a zipper. Um, I see the big thing right now is people making quilts with the uh, paper piecing. So uh, I have two downloads that are um, squares with like a faux paper piecing. I'm excited. I want to be able to do that and share that with you. Unfortunately, work gets in the way of everything, right? All my spare time. And now that the weather is starting to get nicer, you know, I may be slowing down in my videos because I want to be able to enjoy the outside. And soon yard work will start up, so that'll be that I have to do. So embroidery is um, a lot done during the winter months because it's cold and it's, you know, snowy and here in northeastern Pennsylvania we get crazy weather and it's March. It's almost the end of March, but we still could get some snow. You just never know. <clears throat> but this weekend has been absolutely perfect. The weather's been so nice. I've been doing some cleaning and taking curtains down and changing the room around and decorated a little bit for Easter and um, yeah, when you get that extra hour, we change the clocks so we um, get an extra hour of daylight. We lost an hour, but we get an extra hour of daylight and um, it just kind of gets you in the mood that, you know, Things aren't so dark and dreary and you can move from work and it's still light out for a little while so you can go out, take the dog for a walk and you know, have to be an indoors all day working. It's nice to get out and enjoy. Alright, so we're almost done with that. Next we're going to change our thread to pink. That's super cute. Isn't that fun? Look how nice that came out. And it's like kind of fuzzy because we use the fleece. Well, I use the fleece. You all watch me, but I use the fleece. <laughs> okay. So we're going to use this bright pink. And um, this is uh, Thread Nanny again, 085. So we're going to go ahead, change our thread. And I'll tell you, I still giggle with delight with um, this machine with doing that automatic threading. Like before you had to push a lever down and it had to go this with that little automatic thing. Oh, it just brings a smile to my face every time I do it. So I have some pink fleece. I'm just gonna cut a small little piece of that. And this is a little, a lot thinner. I can barely even see that. A lot thinner fleece than the white was. So let me just take a look. Okay, I want it that way. And we're going to place that over the top. Okay, and it's going to stitch around. And again, we're going to have to use our scissors to trim around. And then it will do the a really fun satin stitch it does around it. out a little bit and trim around I really need to work on my um, video skills because some of this I probably could do fast forward but yeah, I just like to do the content and bring it up so you can see. I'm going to go with my little lint roller again to remove any loose.
pieces of thread or batting or whatnot. Okay, so we're keeping the pink in, and now it's going to do a satin stitch all around. But, um, you know, if you don't want to listen to the chit-chat, some people enjoy the chit-chat. Maybe you're home, you're lonely, you're by yourself, or, you know, you just like to listen to someone talk. You could sit, <coughs> excuse me, and listen, or um, you certainly can kind of fast forward through it if that's not your thing. So both are available, depending on what you like. I don't mind the chit chat. Sometimes I may get a little quiet, and that's okay. So this is going to be just two minutes, and then um, we're going to start doing all the embroidery stitching. And you don't know when it gets to that one spot. If you've been watching my videos, it does that squeaky noise, and I'm using a brother embroidery uh, hoop. So I'm not using a generic hoop. I thought maybe. The generic hoops I was using that had something to do with it but so I think I'm gonna have to check my stitch count and um, it may be due to go in for a service and I know I just got it a couple months ago and Fred will when I go into poking a sew back Fred's gonna say see I told you you needed that commercial machine and I know that'll be my next step but I just love this machine so much and if I have to make a couple trips a couple times a year to the Poconos to um, have Bill service. Well, then I will. So this, his name is Bill. This one's Bill. And, uh, okay, there we go. Look how cute that is. Cute little stitch going around the tail. I think you could see that. I don't know why I'm thinking maybe I need to go a little closer. Okay, so now we're going to do the two stitches on both sides. We're going to keep the pink thread in there. And it's going to kind of do this X design. And that's where the pink came in. I've got a pink little tail. Hopefully it looks like a tail. And I didn't want to do a white tail. And then I thought, bring in some pink with this little design on the edge. So to bring in, you know, a little pink. You have to throw in a little pink with all your designs that you think. Purple is my favorite color, though. But I thought purple, unless I went with a lighter purple, but then I was afraid you wouldn't see it too much. So this pink, I think, against the black and white, I think that was a good choice. But again, if you purchase this design, you can personalize this however you want to. And depending what size you want, totally up to you. So when this is done, we're going to change the thread again to a green color. And it's going to do all the leaves. And um, after that, then we will change to the bright yellow. And that one's going to take a little bit of time. I'll let you know when we get to it. So if you want to fast forward. But it does all the little flowers. And then the final one is just one minute. And it does the center of the flowers. Super fun. Super fun. Okay, so we're going to do the green. Oop. And the green is, again, the color 507. And it's like a grass green. I thought that was nice and bright to go along with the bright flowers. So the leaves are, um, let me find my thread there. The leaves are three minutes. Just want to get my thread. I should really have a pair of tweezers here. There we go. All right, so it's going to do the leaves on the top and the bottom and the sides. So it's hard to believe that Easter is just two weeks away. 
and then we'll be in, we'll be in April already. So um, every year for holidays, um, my family and I we like to get together. So um, last year during the whole outbreak, we we didn't really get together for holidays because everything was just so you know shut down and you know we were trying to social distance and everything and I work in a medical office so I kind of didn't want you know to be around anybody because you know you just don't know so this year um well my daughter and 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 myself and her family we did come down with, with COVID so um we are going to be getting together for Easter. My son and his girlfriend are going to be going up to her family's for Easter this year because they haven't seen them in a while because of everything going on. So it'll just be our little group and I'm going to be doing Easter this year. So we like to everybody bring something. So um, my daughter's going to bring the ham. I have to pick up some local kibasi. And we're going to have some um, macaroni salad. And I don't know what else are on the list. I don't even remember. Usually some sort of vegetable. And I'll be doing a dessert. And I'm thinking a lemon lush would be nice. Nice, light, airy, fresh. I think that would be a good dessert. So, it'll be nice. What do you all do for Easter? Let me know down in the comments. Do you celebrate Easter? Maybe you don't celebrate. You know, I always assume that everyone does, but, you know, everyone with different faiths, different religions, maybe some people don't celebrate Easter. Maybe you celebrate spring, which is another great thing you can do. So I'm just looking forward to it. And it always seems like with our family, everything is about the food, right? By the way, I need to start working on that. I had been in the winter months kind of hibernating like a, like a little uh, bear and consuming too many calories than I should be and not eating the most healthiest. So I need to work on that. Okay, we're almost done with the leaves. We have this one and one more. And then we'll be doing the flowers. So the flowers, I'm doing a bright yellow. I think the yellow shows up really nice. And um, the contrast between the yellow, the black, white, the pink. I think it all goes well together. color that I'm using is 205. Nice bright yellow for the flowers. Let's get this all red up. It's starting to get dark here. What time is it? Oh, it's 7 30 already. Oh my goodness. Where did the day go? Don't you sometimes wonder where does the weekend go? Okay. Now this is a long stitch out, so the flowers are going to take 13 minutes. So if you want to stick around, or if you want to fast forward, you can do that. But um, I'm trying to think of what else we can chat about. Stitching. There's just something 
I know some people walk away. I tend not to walk away from when I'm embroidering because if something were to happen, I walk away. You know, you can do a lot more damage to mach your machine by letting it go as opposed to stopping it. And you do get to learn your machine. You get to learn the sounds of the machine. So when something doesn't quite sound right, I mean, you pick that up. And it doesn't, you don't have to be working with your, your machine a long time to acquire that. It's kind of like with kids, you know, like when they're babies, they have different cries. And certain cries, you know, are food cries. Certain cries are when, you know, they need a diaper change. Certain cries are just, you know, just wanting attention. So embroidery machines are a lot like children. And they like what they like. Some don't like when you use tape on them. Some don't like the change in temperature of the room. If it's too dry, your thread may break a lot. If it's, um, you know, uh, certain threads they may not like. And um, you need to learn what your machine likes and doesn't like. And, and so far, I mean, I've been pretty, pretty lucky, knock on wood, with this machine. And um, I think it does a great job. But I do enjoy watching it stitch out. I just find something mesmerizing, you know, to think that, you know, it, the machine can do all this, you know, it's just... I just, I don't understand all the technology of how it does it all and the digitizing and all that. Um, that's a whole other part of the embroidery world is learning how to digitize, which is taking a design and making it into a stitch file that the machine can read. So people like me, we just appreciate all of you that are out there that digitize and make all these fun designs that we can stitch. Who knows? I'm not going to rule it out. Maybe in the future. But um, right now, I'm happy with buying pre made designs and stitching them out. <laughs> this is so cute. I am so loving this design. I can't tell you. So, the, um, the viewer that suggested I do this, thank you so much for your suggestion. And by the way, you also had me looking at the Sweet Pea Embroidery site, and I had to purchase a few other designs. So, I like to watch when they're on sale, so um, check out Sweet Pea online. Just do a search for Sweet Pea. I think it's swpea.com, um, their website. But if you just do a search for Sweet Pea, they are based in um, Australia. They have a YouTube channel as well, so check out their YouTube channel. They've been doing uh, weekly videos showing you some of their designs, which, uh, I mean, their, their work is, their, some of their designs are so fabulous. I look at it and I think, oh, there's no way I could ever do that. But you can. Everybody can do it. You just have to, you know, have the time and um, read the instructions, the directions, and anybody can embroider. Just like I feel anybody can can cook. I'm not so sure if anybody can bake. Because I think baking is a whole other entity. But if you can read and you could follow directions, then I believe you can do anything. And sometimes it does take a little bit of knack. Say for cooking, for instance, or baking. But um, with practice, you can do anything. You put your mind to it. So don't rule out, you know, any of the designs that may look to be a little more complicated. They provide great instructions. I mean, certainly, I did not think this time in my life I would be embroidering table runners and little purses and zipper purses and all sorts of fun things. Just take it one small step at a time and you can do it. You can do anything you want. And the great part about embroidery is that you can pick out your own fabrics. You can pick out your own thread colors. 
you can take designs and eliminate them. Like say I just wanted to do the bunny in the center and make a table runner. I could just skip right through the other steps and only use the bunny. And you can personalize, you can purchase a editing software. I like to use Imbrilliance and I also have Imbrilliance Thumbnailer where um, I can add in uh, names or things like that. And with the thumbnailer, it, in, it lets you see the actual design on your screen other than just the uh, letters of a name of the design. You can see the actual design. And that's all done on your computer. And then, of course, you save it and you would put it on your thumb drive and then bring your thumb drive to your embroidery machine. There's also, um, that came with this machine, there is a hardwire hookup where I can hook my my laptop right to the machine and download designs that way. And then you also have the opportunity of saving some of the designs, like say I was planning on making lots of these and I didn't want to use the thumbnail all the time, I could go ahead and save this design right to my machine as opposed to with the thumbnail. But I have a lot of USBs that I had bought and they have designs saved on them. And I have the command strip hooks and I have them, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're hanging over there on my wall and that's where I have my USB um, my USBs um, hanging there out of the way and I label them. I just used a, a Sharpie marker and labeled them. Now you just have them saved on your computer if you want, but some of them I think, I don't know, I just didn't want to delete them from the USB thumb drive and I just wanted to save them on there. So if I ever wanted to go ahead and, you know, make more elf clothes or anything like that, I just go to the USB that has elf on it and I know all my designs are saved on that thumb drive. But you don't have to do that. That's just what I choose to do. And USBs are inexpensive. Now when you're purchasing USBs, I don't purchase the really large ones. Um, I try to stick to the, um, what is it, two gig? Is that what they call it? Um, because machine can only read so many. So, and they're cheaper. The higher the gig, the more expensive they are. So I usually stick to a two gig and, you know, just fit on there how many I can fit. What's that noise again? And I'm done with this. I'm going to go in and uh, check the stitch count. I'll show you how to do that. And I notice I'll never change the time on my machine. It's still an hour off from the daylight savings time. And I forget that that's on the machine. So I'm saying it's 6.38 or it's regularly 7.38. <laughs> but yeah, I want to check my stitch count because I may have to make an appointment um, to take it in for just a service. Because <coughs> it may need a cleaning out. And then I'll have... Um, have them check to see what that little squeak noise is that comes occasionally. I'll take it right up to the Poconos and and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now I'm gonna not look in the showroom. I'm not gonna look. machine in and leave it there for service and then when they call that it's ready, I'll take another ride out and go pick it up and come home. No shopping in the showroom. It's going to be like one of those people that put a rubber band around their wrist. So when I get there and I'm thinking, oh, I just want to look around, I'm just going to pull the rubber band so it pinches me on my wrist so that I be like, no looking in the showroom. So they do have wonderful fabrics and things too, and all sorts of, they sell vacuums, because it's Pocono sewing back, but um, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> all right, we have about two, about 
2,500 more stitches to go, so we're almost done with this design. And then I'll only have to do two more to put it all together. So it's a fun weekend project. I do have another design that I purchased from Sweet Pea a couple weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago. It's um, either a, a wall hanging or a little quilt that you can make. It's And again, I don't know if I said, it's for Easter. And each block has, spells out the word Easter. And um, they also have like bunnies and chicks and whatnot. So, um, that looks like a fun project too. I um, don't think I'm going to get that done this year for Easter, but I have the design and whenever I want to um, stitch it out, I certainly can. And it was on sale along with the, the Easter table runner I did with the big bunny faces. That one had been on sale. So um, be sure to subscribe to their website and they send updates all the time as to what they have on sale. And so, a lot of times you can save up to 50% off or more. And then they also have reward points where with each purchase you um, get rewarded with points. And I believe when you have enough points saved up, I think it's a 20% discount you get. So that's fun. Anywhere we could save a few dollars, right? <laughs> Alright, we are almost done. After this flower, I'm looking at the screen, it looks like we have one more flower in the centers. And then we'll be able to um, I'll do enough to do two more when I upload this. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. By you subscribing, it helps me um, to, to know what you enjoy watching. Um, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. Please be nice. Leave a nice comment. Um, and share it. Sharing is caring, right? Because I am, and I, I mention this all the time, I'm surprised how many, when I go into my uh, YouTube studio, how many people watch that aren't subscribers? And um, I also run the video ads so um, by you watching and with the video ads it helps bring in a little bit of income lately I haven't had any um, payments from from my channel so I'm not really sure I mean I see people are watching but I'm not really sure why it has gone down but the extra money that I do make from the, the ads helps to, um, you know, for me to buy more designs, um, maybe some hoops, um, threads, stabilizers, all the things that are needed to um, do these videos. And I, I appreciate that very much, those of you that, um, that watch. All right. Okay, so next we're going to go to the orange to do the centers. And, um then we will be done with this design. So the orange I'm using is, um, again, Thread Nanny, and it is one, two, six, and this is a quick one minute stitch. Just quickly does the center of the flowers. And then we'll 
take a look at what we did. And uh, I'll let you all go back to what it is that you were doing before you came to join me. Now those little threads that are sticking up, I will go in and trim all them away. Like I see the first flower, there's a little thread. And I will trim them up. But making these um, types of things, I mean, for my daughter to hopefully hand down to my grand grandchildren, you know, to think like, you know, who knows? Um, wait, wait, hold on a sec. Did that not cut the thread? Been noticing that lately, too. Oh, it did cut the thread. Okay. Um, to think maybe, you know, they'll end up having it. And, um, you know, I can go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead and put a little label on the back, you know, with the date on it and, you know, made with love or, you know, whatever you can embroider a little, um, label, <coughs> excuse me, on the back of the fabric. That's another thing you can do to personalize it. So when they flip it over, they'll say, oh, look, grandma made this and it was back in, um, 2021 she did this, you know. want to check the stitch count so when this is done um, I'll show you how to do that on this machine anyhow you know, depending on what machine you have but I'm thinking it's probably coming due for a service call done. There's a few more. There we go. Listen for it. this out of the hoop. Oh, I have that hoop tightened up tightly. All right, so here we are. So um, what I would do is I would take my scissors and trim all this extra excess stabilizer. So let's go ahead and do that probably off camera so I apologize and then before I go to put it all together I would like I stated earlier I would trim around leave about a half an inch around so you can join them together but let's add this to the three I already have done you'll get a better look at what the final project is going to be okay so this I would you know, trim out about a half an inch, but just for now, let's see. So here is my stitch line. I'm going to put some pins in to do just a little visual how this is going to look. Let me bring it over closer to me here and then I'll show you. Put a pin here on top and the bottom. All right. Let me 
bring it under the light here. Okay, so there is one, two, three, four of them done. But look how fun that's going to be. So all I need to do is another black one and another check one, and then that will complete the whole circle of the table round for, um, for my daughter for Easter. I think it's cute. All right, let's check, um, let me put this aside. Let's go over here to the screen and I promised I would show you about the stitch count. So I'm back to the main menu. Let me flip you here. So here's your main menu. Oops, a little tipsy there. So we're gonna go down here. Let me see, can you see that? Down here. And this is where you can go through all the different prompts of all the settings. Okay, so here we are. Um, service count, because it hasn't been serviced yet. So the total count of stitches is uh, 1,400, wait, how does that go? 1,482,173. Now, um, Fred had told me that um, I should probably bring it in for service at about 2 million, pushing it to 2.5 million. So I've only had this machine a few months, so I've done a lot of stitching on it. Um, so that's where you can find that. All right, let's see what else is in here. So the different displays, embroidery foot height, you could just go through here. Um, a lot of this I haven't even learned how to use. Oh, look, there's an embroidery basting that you can do. And then it takes you back to the beginning. So I'm going to close that out. So anyhow, um, that's where you go to look on the um, Brother Innovus Essence VE 2300 machine. But a lot of them are the same. They'll have a little question mark down here. Um, and this one here that looks like a little notebook, that's where you go in um, when you are done. Always press when removing embroidery unit. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, it just takes the thing over to the left-hand side a little. All right, all right, everyone. Let's bring our little design back in and um, take another peek at it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, thank you so much for joining me. It's always fun to work on new projects and share them with you. And again, go over to my Facebook page and um, be sure to join and check out all the projects that I've been doing as long as I've been doing embroidery. And I appreciate you watching. Subscribe, thumbs up, comment, share, like, and uh, we'll see you next time. So happy stitching. Bye for now.